Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Scientific attitudes towards non-avian dinosaurs have changed radically since the group was first identified as such during the early 19th century. Originally envisaged as enormous dragon-like antediluvian monstrosities, mostly due to very sparse fossil evidence, by the mid-1800s, the leading paleontologists of the day, such as Sir Richard Owen, put forward a new image of the beasts, one that saw dinosaurs as huge and elephantine, but also active and dynamic. However, once more complete remains of now famous genera such as Diplodocus, Triceratops and Allosaurus came to light in the American West, scientific perspectives on dinosaurs shifted once again. Under the dubious purview of Othniel Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, these new and often massive animals were cast as sluggish, lumbering, cold-blooded dimwits that were the opposite of dynamic, instead being defective and bound for extinction, no matter how physically impressive they may have seemed. This moribund view of dinosaurs quickly became established in popular culture, with members of the general public sharing the largely negative academic opinions on the ancient reptiles. In addition, while some Victorian paleontologists had correctly championed the connection between birds and dinosaurs, such as Thomas Huxley, the consensus interpretation held that birds originated from some other group of archosaurian reptiles, with dinosaurs leaving no descendants. By and large, the image of the backward, swamp-dwelling big lizards persisted from the late 19th century and across the first half of the 20th, becoming well-established in literature, film, and scientific circles. However, as with many fields of study, the 1960s brought a radical shake-up to the world of paleontology, with one new genus in particular helping to radically alter our view of dinosaurs, Deinonychus, the Terrible Claw. First described and named as the animal we know today by John Ostrom in 1969, although some older remains had been uncovered in the 1930s but remained understudied, Deinonychus was a modestly sized and clearly active and agile predator, with intimidating sickle claws on the feet. Ostrom noted many anatomical similarities with modern birds, which challenged prevailing opinions held at the time and vindicated the hypotheses of Thomas Huxley. In addition, Deinonychus opened the door to discussions regarding the potential endothermic nature of non-avian dinosaurs, as well as leading to speculation that some of these animals may have possessed feathered coats. Ostrom's work on Deinonychus, coupled with the extensive efforts of his pupil, the charismatic Robert Barker, ushered in the so-called dinosaur renaissance, a huge paradigm shift in which paleontologists reconsidered many aspects of dinosaur biology, life appearance and behaviour, finding that they were indeed active, dynamic and successful animals. Although receiving a great deal of pushback at first, such ideas became well established by the 1980s and slowly began to trickle out into the realm of popular culture. Indeed, Ostrom and Barker's Deinonychus became a somewhat iconic dinosaur in paleoart circles, given its distinctive appearance and seemingly athletic hunting behaviour, with images of the animal leaping onto the back of the Ornithischian Tenontosaurus becoming something of a paleoart meme. It was also at this time that Deinonychus became envisioned as a pack-hunting predator, demonstrating that dinosaurs were intelligent enough to coordinate their movements something not really considered possible in the early 20th century. Also iconic was Barker's depiction of a running Deinonychus, presenting a lean, fast-moving predator that became symbolic of the changes in perspective brought about by the dinosaur renaissance. This was the image of Deinonychus that stuck in popular culture, a super-fast, scaly, dynamic hunter that used its foot claws to disembowel prey. Personally, I always felt that these early depictions of the genus kind of looked like a more murderous Kermit the Frog, with its face being a bit sock puppet-like. However, during the 1980s, Barker produced more illustrations of Deinonychus, even drawing them with feathered coats, which was very much ahead of its time. In the realm of pop culture, Deinonychus was featured prominently in Harry Adam Knight's 1984 novel Carnosaur and its hilariously trashy film adaptation as well as, more famously, in Michael Crichton's 1990 novel Jurassic Park and the subsequent smash-hit film directed by Steven Spielberg. Crichton ultimately chose to use the name Velociraptor for these dinosaurs rather than Deinonychus. Crichton had met with John Ostrom several times during the writing process of the book to discuss details of the possible range of behaviours and life appearance of the animal. 
Crichton at one point apparently apologetically told Ostrom that he had decided to use the name Velociraptor in place of Deinonychus for the book, because he felt the former name was more dramatic. Despite this, according to Ostrom, Crichton stated that the Velociraptor of the novel was based on Deinonychus in almost every detail, and that only the name had been changed. However, both the Velociraptors of the novel and film were larger than the real-life Deinonychus, with the change in name leading to the six-foot-tall, extremely intelligent, cheetah-fast Spielberg raptors cementing themselves in the public consciousness, becoming one of the most famous dinosaur genera. However, the actual Deinonychus, as established by more recent studies, was quite different from both Jurassic Park's raptors and 80s and 90s imaginings of the animal. Native to the western US states of Montana, Utah, Wyoming and Oklahoma, during the Aptian to Albion stages of the early Cretaceous, between 115 to 108 million years ago, Deinonychus fossils have been recovered from the Cloverly and Antlers formations. This relatively early and rather large dromaeosaurid measured about 3.4 metres or 11 feet 2 inches long and weighed between 60 and 75 kilograms on average. Although this does not sound like much, and Deinonychus is often referred to as a small theropod, this description is only relative to the many genera of multi-ton theropod apex predators. Indeed, while researching for this video, I came to the realisation that Deinonychus would have been a really frightening animal to come across if you were teleported back in time to early Cretaceous North America. When alive, this animal was in the same size category as many modern carnivores that are very capable of killing humans including leopards, spotted hyenas and Komodo dragons. When skulls of these animals are compared alongside each other, you realise that Dionychus had a proportionally very large skull for its body mass. It gets even scarier when you put this skull next to an adult human, which demonstrates that this was an animal that could do serious damage if it grabbed a hold of your neck or face. In fact, much of the anatomy of Dionychus was well adapted for making its prey bleed. Compared to other dromaeosaurs, the skull was relatively robust, with a comparatively short snout that was well adapted for tackling large vertebrate prey. The teeth were blade-like and serrated, with the animal biting in a similar way to modern varanids like the Komodo dragon, utilising neck-driven pullback movements to dismember carcasses when feeding. Although some studies have suggested that Dionychus possessed a very powerful bite, more recent studies have indicated a substantially weaker bite force of roughly 700 newtons. Unlike modern carnivorous mammals in the same size range, like hyenas and leopards, which have powerful crushing bites, Deinonychus was again more like a big monitor lizard, in that it used its serrated teeth and strong neck to tear strips of flesh from its prey. Indeed, Komodo dragons actually possess a very weak bite of just 150 newtons or so, and yet are capable of disemboweling a deer in a matter of seconds. The proposed bite strength of Deinonychus was over four times greater than a Komodo dragon's, yet utilised a similar biting strategy, so I imagine the results would have been very... messy. Most famously, of course, as was typical for dromaeosaurids, Deinonychus possessed curved, sickle-like claws on a hyperextensible second toe. While originally interpreted by Ostrom as slashing weapons, Biomechanical studies have revealed that the sickle claws were not able to slice deeply through flesh, being much better suited for grabbing and holding prey, in addition to being useful as climbing crampons. This led to the development of the so-called raptor prey restraint hypothesis, wherein dromaeosaurs are thought to have pounced on prey items, holding them down with their sickle claws, while balancing atop the struggling animal in a manner very similar to modern hawks and eagles. Due to a variety of well-preserved dromaeosaur fossils, mostly from China, it has now become well established that all members of this group were covered in very bird-like feathered coats, including complex veined feathers on the forelimbs and tail tip, in addition to simpler, shaggier, hair-like feathers on the body. This would have made Deinonychus resemble a very large flightless eagle the size of a Great Dane, with jaws and teeth instead of a beak. While John Ostrom and the popular culture depictions derived from his ideas portrayed dromaeosaurids as very fast-running predators, analysis of their leg bones indicates that these animals were not well adapted for speed, instead being agile ambush hunters that pounced on their prey after a brief chase. 
Additionally, while the idea that these animals were highly intelligent pack hunters like modern wolves or spotted hyenas has become very widespread thanks to Jurassic Park, the evidence to support this is shaky at best. A carbon isotopic analysis on Deinonychus teeth suggests precociality for the genus, with the young being able to walk and feed themselves shortly after hatching. Juveniles were also proportionally different from adults, being better climbers and perhaps even possessing the ability to fly for short distances, although this has been heavily debated. The isotopes found for different age specimens indicate that adults and juveniles had different diets across the various age groups, suggesting a more typical Archosaurian set of life stages. The examinations also suggest a lack of mammal-like pack hunting in Deinonychus, with some paleontologists arguing that these animals lived much like Komodo dragons, being solitary and practicing little to no parental care, with adults mobbing large prey species like Tenontosaurus in an uncoordinated way. However, recent studies have shown that other archosaurs such as crocodilians do regularly hunt cooperatively even going as far as individuals serving different roles during the hunt. While crocodiles do engage in cannibalism and infighting, they are also quite social animals, with more complex behavioural patterns than is often assumed. Given the aggregations of multiple Deinonychus individuals of varying ages found at the cloverleaf formation, it seems likely that these dinosaurs were social to some degree, with adults living in close proximity to juveniles, but without actively feeding them, much as in modern ratites. Perhaps, like some crocodile species, multiple adult Deinonychus individuals were capable of coming together to bring down larger prey, even if they more frequently hunted alone. Studies of fossilised eggshells from this genus have revealed that Deinonychus laid bluish-green eggs in an open-topped nest. The parent would have sat on the nest in order to keep the eggs warm, as modern emus and cassowaries do, and unlike more basal theropods like Tyrannosaurids or Allosaurus, which buried their eggs in sediment. In life, Deinonychus dwelt in a flat, humid floodplain, crisscrossed by rivers and bayous, much like modern Florida or Louisiana, although the region did experience marked dry seasons as well. Contemporary dinosaurs included the armoured ankylosaurs Sauropelta and Tatankocephalus, the sauropods Astrodon and Sauroposeidon, the massive apex predator Acrocanthosaurus, as well as several species which would have been on the menu for Deinonychus, including the tiny cat-sized basal ceratopsian Aquilops, the rare orodromine ornithopod Zephyrosaurus, the basal oviraptorosaur Microvenator, and the aforementioned 6-meter Tenontosaurus, of which juvenile individuals would have been targeted. To conclude then, the animal that inspired the Jurassic Park Velociraptors and helped kick off the dinosaur renaissance was not a six-foot-tall, scaly monitor lizard on chicken legs that possessed immense intelligence and hunted in packs, but was more like a flightless toothed eagle the size of a very large dog that may have been somewhat gregarious at times, but did not engage in mammal-like complex pack behaviour. The genus may have been a protective parent like modern ratites, given that juveniles are often found in close proximity to the remains of adults which would not be expected if mature individuals behave like Komodo dragons, as has sometimes been assumed. Thanks for watching everyone! The next episode will be covering the Caviar Morph rodents and their late Eocene voyage across the Atlantic, which allowed for their very successful colonisation of South America. Thanks to my patrons for suggesting this idea, and if you'd like to support me and propose your own concepts for future videos, consider becoming a member on my Patreon page. See you again soon! Cheerio.